Greetings folks and welcome to another episode of 81632-Bit. I'm Rob and as you've seen from the thumbnail today, I'm looking at FMV video games because as the title says, it was the future. Seriously, in the early 1990s, and I know this may be surprising to some, with the advent of CD-ROM, FMV or full motion video was pegged by many as being the future direction of the video game industry. Interactive movies, FMV games, call them what you will, they were seen by a lot of people in senior, senior positions at big companies as being the future of video games. Now, it's easy to look back on these games, especially some of the early ones, and snigger and laugh at the quality of them, because, yeah... With hindsight, it doesn't look great. You've got some really poorly compressed video, very blocky, very grainy. But you have to remember, you have to put this into perspective. At the time, it was state of the art. The only other way you had seen graphics like this would have been in an arcade where you saw a Dragon's Lair or a Space Ace machine or a Mad Dog McCree machine. You weren't seeing anything even close to this on home systems at the time. It was new, it was exciting, and, you know, it was something different. So, let's go back to those early 90s and we'll, we'll look at the games and sort of run through the history of the FMV titles. Now, the first home system to really push FMV was Sega's Mega CD or Sega CD for our American friends and as a piece of hardware even though this was a big push for Sega and I mean a big push a huge huge chunk of the marketing for the Mega CD was based around its FMV titles the Mega CD really was not equipped to handle FMV too well now, as I said, Sega made this a huge part of the push with the Mega CD when it launched. You looked at the adverts that were around at the time, the promotional videos that they issued, FMV was everywhere. Obviously, everyone knows Night Trap. It was the poster boy for FMV games. It was supposedly going to be the big title. It was, this was the one that was going to make people sit up and take notice, and it did. Not always for the right way. But Sega also had their Make My Video series, Sewer Shark. They then followed that up with Double Switch, Ground Zero Texas, which incidentally was the most expensively produced video game of all time when it came out. Lodestar. Loads of different FMV games like this with limited amounts of interactivity. Some were different to others. Games like Night Trap, Double Switch utilised a trap-based system. It was fun. You were jumping between clips, setting off traps, capturing bad guys. But then you had games like Sewer Shark, Ground Zero Texas, Nova Storm. These were on-rails shooters which used the FMV as a streamed pre-rendered background and just laid sprites over the top. Again, very limited, but you know, not a million miles removed from a standard sort of space harrier -y type shooter. But, you know, as I said, these this was what Sega was betting the bank on. And other companies fall too. Like I said, you had games like Dracula Unleashed. You know, you had games like um, Dragon's Lair was converted to the Mega CD. These games were pushed heavily. But the technology really wasn't there. You know, the Mega CD had a single-speed CD-ROM drive in it. Now, for those who don't know, single-speed CD-ROM means it can transfer 160K a second. Not 150 megs, 150 kilobytes a second. This meant that you had fairly low-resolution video. You know, 
at best with the codex available such as Cinepack if you had a powerful enough hardware something like a Motorola 68000 which was running at say 25 megahertz you could get 320 by 240 video at 15 frames per second at 256 cores I think now obviously the mega CD could get nowhere near that and was running at about half that speed so the video was quite small and grain it and it was only 61 cores but you know you can look at that and mock now and go well that was rubbish it looks terrible at the time we'd not seen anything like that in the home so we we accepted it even though we knew it wasn't the greatest now beyond that as time went on obviously making these games they got better with the video certainly you can see the difference in the size and quality in video when you jump from night trap to double switch then jump again to ground zero texas and by the time you get to tomcat alley sega had figured out how to actually manage to get that single speed cd-rom drive to stream basically full screen full sega mega cd resolution fmv as a background it was pretty good it was impressive technically but you know like i said it wasn't really a machine that was technically able to do fmv how people wanted it now the machines that could handle fmv came later stuff such as the 32x add-on for the mega drive and mega cd that certainly improved the system's uh, graphical capabilities and allowed for much better, higher resolution, more colourful video, although it still wasn't brilliant. And you had the 3DO. Now, the 3DO had the benefit of having a double speed CD-ROM drive, so 300k a second, and this allowed it to obviously stream video better, but it also had more advanced hardware which meant better levels of compression could be used further increasing the quality of the video so you can see when you see night trap running on the mega cd next to night trap on the 3do huge difference in video quality it's not quite what would have been at the time broadcast quality visuals but it was certainly getting up there and, you know, the 3DO had a few FMV titles, to be honest, mostly adult ones, it has to be said. But realistically, home consoles were moving away from that. Yes, some FMV titles did end up being ported to the PlayStation. Um, Nova Storm ended up on there. Uh, there were a couple of others as well. There was an X-Files video game that ended up on there. There was like seven discs of FMV. But consoles started moving into the 3D polygon realm. The big place for FMV titles was PCs because as we moved through the 90s, multimedia PCs became the norm. Once you got into the realms of the more powerful 486 processors and then the Pentium processors, Windows 95, you really started to see PC developers utilizing FMV as a base for a game in a way that console manufacturers couldn't for example you know on the pc you had titles like mist seventh guest uh 11th hour they used fmv in a way that consoles just couldn't because they didn't have the ram or the storage available to them with an install you had companies like Sierra who were competing at the time with LucasArts in the point and click realm quite heavily and Sierra invested quite a lot in using FMV in its games there was Roberto Williams Phantasmagoria series plus the second Gabriel Knight game combined traditional point and click with FMV to it has to be said quite stunning effect at times you had games such as the rarely seen but actually quite interesting Bloodwings Pumpkinhead's Revenge, which was a mix of Doom esque first person shooter with on rails FMV shooter sections and interactive point and click style FMV sections. And you know, you had the big budget boys like Wing Commander 3, which did also appear on the 3DO which really pushed the ball out in terms of using FMV as a presentational tool, not necessarily as the core of the gameplay. 
and realistically that's where fmv ended up for the most part as we move through the 90s and into the early 2000s fmv became a way of telling stories within games but not the actual gameplay anymore and that was it really for years we get into the late sort of 2010s and we do see a resurgence in fmv games you have titles that popped up on steam such as the bunker the infectious madness of dr decker the remasters of the classic digital pictures sega mega cd fmv titles like night trap and double switch fmv has had a bit of a resurgence in recent years because there are still possibilities for it especially with modern technology but you know the industry bet the bait well it, it bet everything on fmv at one point let's put it that way it didn't work and that's fine because it doesn't have to work you know it's an innovation it failed but there was that time in the early to mid 90s where fmv was the future not all fmv games are rubbish people will tell you that it's nonsense night trap is still a brilliant fun game to play so is double switch dracula unleashed ground zero texas they're fun games they're just not the future they were the past or they are the past rather and at the time they were of the time not not of the future but we didn't see that then anyway i want to thank you for watching this video today i've been your host rob as usual if you've enjoyed what i've had to say you've enjoyed the video do hit that like button if you really enjoyed it and you want to see more do subscribe the option is there and you know if you want to be notified when i upload a video ring the bell it's all good leave comments down below but please do be respectful anything that i deem to be rude or inconsiderate i'll just delete it because realistically there's no need for it if you disagree with me you can do it civilly or not at all please you'll see some links to my various socials at the end here and until next time i'm rob this has been 81632 bit and i hope you enjoyed yourselves